everything that God commanded him, God instructed him, God told him, Noah did. And this is how we work with God. Everything that the Lord speaks about in his word, okay, for us to do is, and we are doing it, we have to do it. It's in doing it that we work with him. Why? Because you don't see God. You and I cannot see him. However, when you are doing the things that are, he has said we are to do in his word, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Now, then you are working with him by what? Because you are doing it though, by faith. We've been looking at this teaching on uh, faith, the way to walk with God. Faith, the way to walk with God. And um, we have been uh, studying this and examining this very important you know, um, topic. Now, as at last week, we did um, uh, look at the uh, life of uh, Noah. Praise God. Noah was one who walked with God. Like I said, we're looking at the topic, faith, the way to walk with God. Faith. The way to walk with God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, we saw in the book of Noah chapter 6 you know, uh, last week that in a wicked and a perverse uh, generation, um, Noah found grace in the sight of God. Um, if, I, if I'm able to just you know, read um, from the book of uh, Genesis chapter 6, I read from verse 5, it said, Then the Lord, reading from verse 5, Genesis chapter 6, reading from verse 5, it said, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Continually. So you have a wicked and an evil generation. Everything that they want to do, it, the thoughts of their heart was always evil continually. Verse 6 says, And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah, the Bible says, found grace in the sight, in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now, you know, in a generation that was so wicked, that was perverse, uh, the, the intent of their heart was evil continually. Um, and if you read further down, you see that you know, verse 11 says the earth, was, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So you had, you know, it was corrupt. And people were, you know, violent. So it was filled with what violence. Yet one man, one man, um, found grace in the sight of God. And here is you know, what God said concerning Noah. It says, this is the genealogy of Noah, verse, eight, verse 9. Genesis chapter 6, verse 9 says, this is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. The word perfect there means no blameless. It was blameless. In his what in his generation that means he was a man of integrity as well praise god hallelujah so here is no noah uh being described by god as being a just man that means a person who has um i mean i mean imagine at that time that you no know, god could call him a just man it just means you have been you are justified as though you never committed any sin at all so and god wanted to um you know, wipe off the uh, uh, the people who are on the earth, man and beast, the Bible says. But it's quite interesting that you know, Noah did not um, um, intercede for uh, for humanity at all at the time uh, because there was no other person, because he was the only person who uh, and his family who were found to be righteous in that respect. So, but... But Noah walked with God. Why? Because everything that God commanded him to do, God spoke to him about the ark, start to build the ark, build the ark, and he carried on. He didn't, he didn't question God, but he did everything that God you know, asked him to do. He never questioned God at all. If you look at you know, Genesis chapter 6, verse 22, Genesis chapter 6, verse 22 said, Thoughts Noah did according to all, Noah did according to all 
that God commanded him. So he did. Everything that God commanded him, God instructed him, God told him, Noah did. And this is how we work with God. Everything that the Lord speaks about in his word, okay, for us to do is, and we are doing it, we have to do it. It's in doing it that we work with him. Why? Because you don't see God. You and I cannot see him. However, when you are doing the things that are, he has said we are to do in his word, principle of hallelujah, now then you are working with him by what? Because you are doing it you know, by faith. You are doing it you know, out of your reverence and your love and your fear for him, not a crippling fear or a trembling fear, but it's a fear of respect to, you know, for him. Praise God, hallelujah. And then you do that. So as a result, you are then well, working with God. Just as Noah, the Bible says, thus Noah did according to all, according to all that God commanded him. So you and I, once we do all that God commands us, we are what we are working with God. Now, if you look at the book of you know, James, chapter 1, verse 22, let's go to the book of you know, James, the New Testament, James 1. Let's see what it says there. James chapter 1, verse 22 to 25. Hallelujah. Praise God. James chapter 1, verse 22 to 25. It says, uh, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Be what? Be doers of the word, and not hearers what? Only deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, and not a doer. He is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. Verse 25, but he, but he who looks into the perfect law of what? Of liberty. Hallelujah. And continues in it. Hallelujah. Now, this is, this is the law of what? Of liberty. <laughs> it's the perfect. It's the perfect what? Law of what? Of liberty. It liberates you. I mean, there are people who say, you know, they are liberals and, and all the rest, you know, <laughs> in society. Uh, but uh, they are in bondage. But this is the war that liberates you, that gives you what? Liberty. It says, he who uh, looks into the perfect law of what? Of liberty and continues in it. People have criticized the Bible so many times. It's an oppressive book. It is no, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's about, uh, it, it, it promotes you no know, sexism, it promotes you no know, homophobia, and it promotes this and that and that, all rubbish. This is, you know, the most perfect law of what, of liberty. It liberates you from all the, uh, the, 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 the the works of the kingdom of darkness, the works of the devil, the works who the one who rules over this world. He it liberates you. The word of God, the perfect law of liberty, liberates you from that. Praise the Lord. Now that's not what I'm talking about here, but I'm just I just felt I should emphasize on that as well. Uh, and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. But a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. So. You know, doing the work, obeying what the Word of God says, doing it brings about and attracts what God you know, blesses. So this one will be blessed in what he does, in what he or she you know does. Praise about Hallelujah. So we must understand that um, just as Noah um, obeyed God, did all that God commanded, and uh, that was how. It was a judge to walk with you, with God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus must say something um, in that regard. It's one in the book of Matthew chapter 7. If we go to the book of Matthew chapter 7, reading from verse 24. Matthew chapter 7, reading from verse 24. Here is you know, what Jesus says. says. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Uh, the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, 
and it did not fail for it was what it was founded on the rock so each time you and i obey the word of god each time we subscribe to god's word to hear it to know it and to obey it praise the lord hallelujah what are we doing we are building our lives on the solid rock praise the lord hallelujah we are built so the storms will always come the storms of life will come yes they will come but because we have built our lives on the solid rock of god's word it cannot fall at all praise the lord hallelujah now look at verse 26 it says but who but everyone who hears these sayings of mine and this is jesus speaking and does not do them will be like will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain descended the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell and great was its fall praise the lord hallelujah so this again is proof that you and i that uh, when we subscribe to god's word and we believe it and we act on it and we do it that is what faith is about friends you are doing what you are building your life on what on a solid foundation on a solid rock jesus is that rock he is that rock because the storms of life will always come it comes to everyone it comes to everyone and but when it comes what do you do are you going to be standing or are you going to fall like a pack of cards or like a house that's been built upon the sand upon the sand so it, the choice is yours but my prayer for you is that you would um you would build your house, you would build your life on the solid rock of God's word by obeying, doing what the Lord, his word you know, says concerning us. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. So, um, so that is what, so if you look at, uh, so going back again to the book, to, to uh, uh, Genesis chapter 6, uh, still looking at you know, the, uh, the person of Noah. Uh, verse uh, 7, chapter 7, forgive me, verse 1 says, Then the Lord said to Noah, Come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. As, as, as I think as I was saying earlier, Clement, I said that, that, you see, God wanted to do something in the earth. Now, so because Noah was 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 said by the Lord to be just righteous. God confided in him, and God gave him the sick total thing what he wanted to do, and that's the beauty of it. You know, God wants to show you and I reveal secrets you know, to you, to us. But the key thing is, is, we need to be walking with Him. You need to be walking with God. He wants to reveal secrets to you. He wants to. God wants to give you and I what secrets to show us reveal things to us that will be beneficial to us praise the lord hallelujah amen i think yes so in the book of you know um um uh yeah in the book of you know proverbs chapter 2 verse 7 proverbs 2 7 says he stores up sound wisdom for the upright hallelujah he stores up what sound wisdom for the what for who for the upright so when you become born again when you repent of your sins when you receive, accept God's forgiveness and receive Jesus Christ as Savior Lord, and you are following Him, God would lay up what wisdom, sound wisdom for you and I, the upright. Praise God, Hallelujah. Okay, praise God. Now, so, um, so what do we learn? What can we learn from um, Noah? Everything God said, asked Noah to do, He did. He didn't question. So that is the way to walk with God. The word of God is not for debate. We are to follow. We are to seek his help. We are to seek grace to be able to follow his word, to do it according to what he has, uh, how he has given it to us in the, in, in the scriptures by revelation and by understanding. Praise God, hallelujah. And in doing it, because we are putting our faith in him, we see the results. We see the blessing as well in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, um, now, the, another person who walked with God, who walked with God, is uh, the person called um, Enoch. Enoch. Now, we'll go to the book of you know, Genesis chapter 5. 
Genesis chapter 5. Um, I'll read from verse um, 21 of the book of Genesis chapter 5. It says, Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. After he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Verse 24 says, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Now, we, I want us to sort of you know, um, look at that. Now, not very, very much is written uh, concerning or about Enoch, other than here in Genesis chapter 5, as well as in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, uh, verse uh, 5 or 6. We're going to go there as well very shortly. Uh, so Enoch, the Bible says, you no know, walking you know, with God. Now, at the age of 65, because if you read further down, or if you read you know, maybe the, pre, uh, the preceding you know, uh, verses, you see that you know, this person you know, uh, lived to a particular age, and you know, he had sons and daughters, you know, so, so many others. But it was only Enoch. Only Enoch was adjudged, was said in the scriptures here to have walked with God. Hallelujah. Of all those listed in this Genesis chapter 5, Enoch was the only person now at the age of 65, he started to walk with God. Now, it might seem, oh, wow, you know, what's that? But you see, if you look at, you know, the rest of them, uh, they all lived to 800 years, 900 years, you know, the likes of um, um, Methuselah lives to be the oldest you know, person uh, in the world he, uh, that ever existed. Uh, the Bible says that he lives to be, uh, where's that now? He lives several hundred years and, and all the days of Methuselah were 969, 969 years, although that's difficult for some people to, to understand. Yeah, but people were living that long. Why? Because don't, don't forget, I said that you no know, God's um, desire is to have an eternal relationship with us. An eternal relationship with us. So it was after you know the book of you know, Genesis uh, chapter six or or so from chapter nine that God says no, uh, He's going to cut down. I think it's Genesis chapter six. Yes, cut down the age, the uh, the years of man, uh, you know, on the earth. If you look at Genesis chapter six verse um, uh, three, it says, and the Lord Genesis chapter six verse three says, and the Lord said, my spirit. Uh, shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. All right, his days shall be 120 years. So, uh, and that was where because of what because of sin, but but you see, this is why Jesus Christ came to save us you know, from from what from sin. So, but d just to understand here that you know, Enoch the Bible says, you no, know, walked with God for 300 years, he walked with God for 300 years. Um, uh, what can we learn from the life of Enoch, for instance? Now, looking at the new, so looking at the um, the amplified you know, version of that Genesis in the chapter five, or even the New Living Translation, it says, you know, that um, uh, Genesis chapter five, reading verse. Uh, uh, let me use the uh, amplified you know, translation, the amplified version. Uh, it says from verse twenty-one of that in. Uh, Genesis chapter 5, it says, When Enoch was 65 years old, Methuselah was born. Enoch walked in habitual, habitual fellowship with God. After the birth of Methuselah, 300 years, and had other sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch was 365 years. Verse 24, And Enoch walked in habitual fellowship, habitual fellowship with God. And he was not, for God took him home with him. So I want to emphasize on that, you know, uh, word habitual, 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 habitual fellowship. Now the New Living Translation call says, you no, know, walk with in close fellowship. So you have the Amplified version says the habitual fellowship. The New Living Translation says close fellowship. But the common denominator here is fellowship, fellowship. But let us look at you know, what the word you know, habitual means. Habit, for instance, you no know, means you no know, uh, acquired behavior. Okay, acquired behavior uh, pattern, acquired behavior pattern, uh, regularly followed until it has become almost involuntary. Uh, a particular practice, custom, or usage, 
all right yeah a particular practice custom or usage um so somebody you have a habit of doing certain things you are you are you you always do this sometimes you do it you know not knowing subconsciously but it's just a part of you you are always doing this you always do that so and that is something that you do maybe you don't know it but you do it all the time and it could be something that you have become accustomed to i mean there are some people for instance the first thing they would do when they wake up is to you know um uh, is to get a cup of coffee or in the day they must have that cup of coffee if they haven't got that cup of coffee they haven't had coffee you know then they're just not really you know they, they can't really function so well you know there are some people who must you know um you know um listen to the news first of all when they wake up when they get up first of all you see so people have you know certain habits of what they do um uh, uh, for myself you know i i'm not a coffee fan <laughs> thank god for that and um, i don't uh, watch the news thank god for that even more praise god hallelujah but what do i do first thing in the morning and each time the lord wakes me up uh, especially early hours of the morning is to come before him in worship first of all and to thank him for the salvation of my soul it's just so important you know um it's so so important i don't know how to emphasize that i don't know how to stress this more but it is so the salvation of my soul you know that the lord you know um saved me from sin praise god hallelujah from a life of sin amen um and um, so when i come to him or my wife and i you know we're praying together you know we are we are thanking him for the salvation of our soul first and foremost and we're praying for others to be saved as well so that has become something a part of us already you know that we do all the time we pray we commit our day to god's hands you know uh, and then when i get into the office as well i pray as well so it's already a part of me already and then i have studied the word as well it's already a part of me it's like if i've not already studied the word it's not i have already my day has already started at all so i so that's what i do it's become a part of me and i and i just can't end if i don't do it then it's like man i'm it's like i haven't had a bath you know what I mean? It's like I'm. I have really had. I'm not. I'm not complete at all. Yeah. So and, and that is what I do personally. So and I come back. You know, one of the things you know, I've mentioned it here before. But one of the things I always do each time I come into my house, maybe I go out. I come in at the, I'm at my door. I go on my knees and I says, "Father, thank you for preserving my going out and my coming in." Whether I come in with a guest or whatever it is, I always go on my knees and thank God. And I says, "Father." Thank you for preserving my going out and my coming. Why? I'm acknowledging him for preserving me. I could have, I mean, many people leave their homes, uh, you know, in the morning or whatever it is they leave their home, but they never come back. You know, one problem or the other, one thing or the other, they don't come back or they get, you know, um, you know maybe accidents or whatever, anything happens. But so each time I come back, I recognize that it is not my driving skills. It's not even about driving. You could be walking on the road and some car just comes in and just know uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the devil inspired and just knocks the person off. You're just there. You could just be driving on your own and some, you know, um, some person can just, uh, just hit you. So, so, so I always give thanks to God each time I come in to my house. Praise God. And that is something that I have been doing and I continue to do and I thank God for it as well. Praise God. So that is a part of me. So I, I tend to live a life of prayer. Amen. Praise God. I, so I'm, I, I, I come to my office, pray, you know, come into the house. I thank God in prayers. And then before we go to bed as well, my wife and I will pray as well, you know, um, and with, with our daughter as well. So we, so, so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a part of us. We, we're just so, um, not out of duty. But because we appreciate our Heavenly Father. And that is what it means to have a close fellowship with Him. Now, what is the word? The word fellowship, you know, uh, uh, means a friendly relationship. Friendly relationship, companionship, companionship. You know what I mean? So, I you know, my wife and I, we have such, you know, compa we have, I we look forward to, you know, talking with, with Jesus, we talk, and I mean, you know, that's the thing. So, uh, so there's that fellowship with us um, between be, between us, and you know God also wants us to have uh, as our heavenly Father. He wants us to be dependent on Him and ask Him, talk with Him. 
So you see, so so if you look at that, you see that you no know, Enoch had such a close fellowship with with God, and 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 you know, excuse me. He was so he had such fellowship with God that God said, "Hey, listen, man, I don't want to lose you. Come, you know, come home straight. Come home." He didn't see death at all. I I, I read from the um, I read Hebrews chapter of, Hebrews chapter eleven. Praise God, hallelujah. Hebrews 11, from the um, Amplified you know, Version, uh, I read verse, uh, from verse 5. It says, because of faith, Enoch was caught up and transferred to heaven so that he did not have a glimpse of death. And he was not found because God had translated him. For even before he was taken to heaven, he received testimony still on record that he had pleased and been, and been satisfactory to God. So again, that close fellowship means everything, every situation that comes our way, everything we are doing, our Heavenly Father is involved. We are talking to him. We are saying, Father, look at this. Father, help us here. Father, look at this. We need you here. Oh, we are praying. You see, that prayer connects you with him. That's the close no fellowship that you can have with God. And that's the key thing. And also, you know, you're studying the word as well. You're reading the Bible so that God will speak to you. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. So that God will do what? God will speak to you. And you would have to know what is his will for you. Praise God, hallelujah. Now, this morning, for instance, you know, in my in my study, I, I went back to the book of you know, Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13 and... Um, one of the places I read was um, in the book of yeah, Matthew chapter 13 verse 44 says, Again, the kingdom of heaven, Matthew chapter 13 verse 44 says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. I was having to meditate on this. Meditate on this. Meditate on this. And that's what the kingdom is about. When you become born again, you... You abandon all that the world has to offer. Hallelujah. Why? Because you found the truth. You have found what is more than gold. You have found who Jesus, or perhaps who Jesus has found you. And then you are now, you know, every other thing, you know, makes no meaning. But to please him, but to have this, this, this intimate relationship with him daily, to love him and to serve him to, and to live for him. Praise God, hallelujah. And that is the key thing. So God wants you and I to have this close fellowship. Just as Enoch had this close fellowship you know, with, uh, with, with God, God wants you and I to have this close fellowship with him. That is how we walk with God. Having this close, habitual fellowship. You are talking to him about everything. You are committing everything to his hands. You are asking for his help. You are asking for his direction. You are seeking his direction in every way. You are, you know, no matter how troubled the uh, 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 situation may be, no, you are just you know, saying, Father, I can't do it without you. I need your help. I need you here. And you are also giving him thanks as well. You are worshiping him. You are thanking him. You are praising him. You are looking, you are studying the word as well. You are saying, wow, Father, look at what you did in the times of old. I mean, just, you know, um, in the course of the week, I was studying the book of Esther. My God, so powerful, so, so powerful. You know, and, 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 and then I'm saying, wow, God, Father, there's no way. There was no way that the Jews would have been delivered from the plot, from the schemes of, you know, Herman, if not that you intervened. That is, you know, something I've just presented. I said, Father, thank you. You know, uh, you know, situations that are coming, that are coming out. Father, thank you. What am I doing? I'm, I'm, I'm spending the time in His Word. I'm, I'm, I'm because I need Him to speak to me. And uh, yes, you know that, you know, He speaks to me, um, uh, in, you know, in my spirit. But I, I need more of Him. I need to know more. I need to know more. So I spend the time. So I'm in close fellowship with Him. I want to know more. I need Him more every day. So that close fellowship, that habitual fellowship, is stuff that. Would, pleases God. You're not spending your time right now that there is no World Cup. Oh, you're there watching, you know, no, I don't even have, I'm not a football person. I don't have time for all that. No, that is just no complete, no waste of time and effort and energy and life. 
for those of you who watch football, best of you know, or best of luck to you all. But it's a waste of my it's a waste of my energy and my time. I don't even have time for it at all. Why? Because it's a god. Yes, football is a god to so many people. So I can't join those people. No, I want to know to know my God you know, <laughs> more praise Lord, hallelujah. So I I I subscribe to him because I want his I want to know him more and more in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. So that close fellowship, habitual fellowship, praising and worshiping him. You know, like you know uh, any other this morning when the Lord woke me up, I came before him you know, uh, I'll just know this, I'm just thanking him, and this song, you know, came up, You Are Beautiful, Beyond Description, To Marvelous For Words, You Are Too Wonderful For Comprehension, Like Nothing Ever Seen Or Heard, Who Can Grasp your infinite wisdom and who can fathom the depth of your love you are beautiful beyond description majesty and the bone I stand I stand in all of you. I stand, I stand in all of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due. I stand in all of you it takes a place of worship it takes no knowing how awesome this God is to come before him in such and you know with such adoration praising and glorifying his holy name that he begin to download and speak to you as well praise God hallelujah you know, that's one of the things I that fascinates me about you know the life of of Jesus Christ is um, his closeness to the Father, praise the Lord, Hallelujah. And that is something that you no know, we we can learn his humility and how he was so close to the Father. Um, I, I read the book of, you know, I can't read everything, but I, let me read the book of, you know, uh, John chapter 5, as part of you know, walking with God here, we're talking about here, uh, such close fellowship, that the way, you know, Jesus walked with the Father, by the Holy Spirit. I read verse 17 it says, of John chapter 5, it says, but, John, but Jesus answered them, my Father has been working until now, and I have been working. Therefore, the Jews sought all the more to kill him because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do. For whatever he does, the son also does in like manner. For the father loves the son and shows him all things. That he himself does, and he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the Son gives life to whom he will. I mean, it, it, whenever I read this place, I see the humility of Jesus. You know, so you know, to to the point of saying, you know, I I can do nothing of my own without the Father. That is what we call close fellowship, close relationship. You know, you know, God wants to have this close relationship with you and I. And that's how we can work with Him. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. He wants to work with you. He wants you to work with Him. So, from the life of 
you know, Noah, for instance, or if I can say from the life of Abraham, for instance, Abraham believed God for the impossible. He believed God for what? For the impossible. And that was how he walked with God. Noah believed God. He did everything God asked him to do. He did it, he didn't question at all. Now, Jesus would have this such close fellowship, sorry, Enoch. Enoch had a close relationship with God. Habitual, everything, everything. He's always talking to God, I believe. He's, you no, know, obviously there were no Bibles there, but I know he's always communicating with God. What about this? Lord, what about this? Lord, how do you see this? Lord, what do we do about this? You know, like me, I've been praying and I'm praying. I say, Lord, you know, the assignment you have given to me, and the ministry, Light has Gospel Ministries, uh, this evangelistic outreach ministry to reach you know, uh, people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Only you can do it, Lord. Only you can, we, I need your help. We need you to do it. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. When you see, you know, people, you know, you talk with people uh, on the street, you know, every week and they'll say to you, there is no God. You know, Clifford, you are just talking rubbish. You know, I mean, I, there was a man I talked with over the weekend and he says, you know, Clifford, I'm happy without God. I don't need God. I don't need God. But, you know, but uh, I, don't, I don't blame him. He said he doesn't need God. But I, I tried to tell him and everything. He says, no, you can't come. I said, I'm not here to convince you, sir. But I just want you to know that God loves you. There is a life after death. Ah, I said, so well, when, when, when he dies, he knows it. there's nothing, nothing at all. So, so these are the people that, you know, we are passionate about reaching with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And our prayer is that even through this platform, you, you that is watching, you would have a close relationship with God. God wants to be your friend. He wants to be your heavenly father. He wants to help you. He wants to be your God as well. Now, you can... It's very, very simple to do. Like I said, you know, earlier in the, when I started, you, God wants to work with you, but sin is what separates us from God. Sin is what separates humanity from God. And the only way to get connected with God is to, number one, repentance of your sin. What does it mean to repent? It means to turn away from your sins. You know that you know what you are doing and you know in your heart of heart that these sins are wrong, you know. Everybody has a conscience. God has planted that in each one. Whatever you, do, you know is wrong. Then you turn away. You say, God, I'm sorry. And then you ask God for forgiveness. And he will receive, will gladly forgive you if you accept his forgiveness. And then you receive Jesus Christ into your heart to be your what? To be your savior. Savior or what? Savior from what? Savior from your sinful nature. Because we are born with a sinful nature. And, and savior from what? From sin. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's so easy to fall into sin. So, so easy. So that is why you need Jesus in you. You need it in you. You need him to come in and live in you. Not just there you go to church there. No, but he wants to live in you so that he can save you from sins. And that is how you then have what uh, a close fellowship with God. You start to walk with him. You start to live for him. You start to, you know, serve him. You start to, you know, read the, the word of God. Gives, you know, gives, you know, yeah, uh, the, the Lord the opens your understanding and you have, you know, he gives you the understanding of the Holy Scriptures. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, so I, because of time, I want to, I want to invite some of you. I want to invite some of you here right now today who are listening and who are watching. Do you have a close fellowship with God? Are you, is, is sin, the barrier is sin keeping you away from God. Now you can repent of your sins just by you know making that decision. It comes from within here. You make that decision within here. Says from today, I'm going to turn away from this. Sin. These things that I'm doing, I turn away from them. And Lord Jesus, come into my life. I'm going to pray for you right now to ask Jesus into your life to be your savior, Lord, so that you will be born again, so that you can have this close fellowship with God, so that you can, you know, just like Jesus, you know, just walk with God and be united with him. Come on, because of time, join me in this prayer right now. So, so important. Join me. Just repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear God. Yes, dear God, I come to you today. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I have sinned against you. I have broken your laws. Now I know that I have done them all in ignorance. Ignorance of your ways and ignorant of your word. 
and I ask you to please forgive me. Wash me completely clean of all my sins with the precious blood of your son, Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus Christ, your only begotten son, came into this world about 2,000 years ago, died on the cross for me to save me from my sinful nature and from sin. And on the third day, you raise him from the dead that I may be justified as though I never committed any sin. Therefore, I willingly receive you, Jesus Christ, into my heart to be my Savior from my sinful nature and from sin and to be the Lord of my life, to be the master of my life, to be the one whom I live for, to be the one whom I follow, to be the ruler of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I receive your Holy Spirit that, that I may live a victorious and a successful Christian life. Loving you, Jesus Christ. Serving you, Jesus Christ. And living for you, Jesus Christ, all the days of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for accepting me as your child. For it is in Jesus Christ's precious name I have prayed. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to pray for you right now. Father, I want to thank you for these ones who have prayed this prayer. The Bible says that with a heart, one believes unto righteousness, and with a mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I pray, Father, for these ones. Lord, your grace has brought them to this point. Father, of making the decision. And Lord, I thank you that your grace be multiplied upon their lives, so Lord, to keep loving you, to keep serving you, and to keep living for you all the days of their lives, so Lord. Thank you, Father, for your goodness upon their lives, O Lord. I pray, Father, for them right now, for the baptism with the Holy Spirit and with fire. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, baptize them with your Holy Spirit and with fire. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, baptize them. Baptize these ones right now, Father, with your Holy Spirit and with your fire. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, that they will be on fire for you. Oh, yes, Lord. Loving you, serving you, oh, Lord, on fire for you in the name of Jesus Christ. In a, in, in, in a perverse generation, oh, Lord. Ha. Father, they will live for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for them. Bless them, O oh, Lord, and for their sake, O oh, Lord, their families, their loved ones, their acquaintances, Lord, their friends, colleagues. Father, will be saved. And Lord, many will come to know you through them as well. In the name of Jesus Christ, we cover their spirits on the body of the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Bless them. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. All right, we're just going to pray together right now, please. Just let us you know, join faith together for your needs. Whatever it is that you are believing God for, whatever it is, the situation in your life, come on. We serve a prayer answering God. Let's just you know, join faith together right now. With God, nothing shall be impossible. Come on, let's pray. Father, I come before you presenting your son and your daughters before your sons and your daughters before you right now. Those, oh Lord, who are, Lord, connected to this service right now, who are watching at any time. Lord, whatever needs, uh, Lord, whatever they are looking up to you for, Father, I pray, Lord, tonight, let them, O oh Lord, receive their miracles right now. I pray for you, Lord, that you come through for them in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever the plans of the devil, whatever the plans of the ruler of this world may be, and their cohorts against any one of these ones, Lord, I come against them and I keep them destroyed right now by the authority in the name of Jesus Christ and by the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for them. Keep them, protect them, watch over them, O oh Lord. Help them, O oh Lord. Meet them at their various point of needs right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, any sickness, O oh Lord, or any infirmity, Father, under the sound of my voice, I rebuke right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, whatever, O oh Lord, they may be desiring of you, looking unto you, Father, for Lord, we ask tonight, O oh Lord, that you would, O oh Lord, meet each one right now at their various point of needs in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Right now, receive your healing, receive your miracles, whatever you are looking unto God for, receive it right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you because you are indeed, O oh Lord, the prayer answering God. 
The Bible says, O Lord, unto you, O Lord, that hears and answers prayers, and all flesh come. Father, thank you. And therefore, we pray tonight, O Lord, let your hand, O Lord, be stretched forth, O Lord, to heal, to deliver, for breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ right now. Thank you. Thank you and thank you again. Blessed be your holy name in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now you all lot are going to just you know, join me right now as well in faith. We're going to pray that the Lord will draw many to himself, uh, that the Lord will draw many. There are so many. The Bible says in John chapter 6, verse 44, Jesus said, No man can come unto me except the Father who sent me draws him. Please you know, join me right now. Let us pray you know, that the Lord will draw sinners. Uh, the Lord will draw them to himself in the name of Jesus. Uh, please you know, join me right now. Let us pray. Let us you know, ask our Heavenly Father to draw them draw sinners draw them to himself uh, by the holy spirit to draw them to jesus uh, to draw them to jesus even from this ministry as well father we pray tonight oh lord lord draw them draw sinners to repentance draw them to your son jesus by your holy spirit in the mighty name of jesus christ no man can come unto you jesus except the father who sent you draws him lord we are standing in the gap today oh lord and we are asking, O oh Lord, draw them, draw men, draw women, draw boys and girls, O oh Lord. Draw, O oh Lord, young adults, O oh Lord, young people. Father, draw them, we pray tonight, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let there be conviction of your Holy Spirit, O oh Lord. Come upon them in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, that as many that we have reached out to, as many that we keep reaching out to Heavenly Father, through, O oh Lord, our tracks, O oh Lord, uh, through, O oh Lord, the online services, O oh Lord, through the Word for Faith, O oh Lord, uh, through the one-to-one -one evangelism on the streets, O oh Lord. Uh, Father, through different, O oh Lord, means, Father, we pray tonight, O oh Lord, uh, Lord, let your word come through to them in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Father, visit them. Lord, we pray for conviction. We pray, Father, for salvation of souls uh, in the name of Jesus. You said we should ask and we will receive. You said we should seek and we will find. You said we should knock and the door shall be opened unto us. Lord, give us the souls. Uh, give us the nation, O oh Lord. Give us this nation. We ask, O oh Lord, Father, for salvation of souls. Uh, we ask, O oh Lord, that is that you give us the souls. Souls that will be saved. Uh, Father, touch them. Lord, touch them in the name of Jesus Christ. Every stronghold, every strong man, O oh Lord, holding them in bondage. It, blinding their minds a lot to the gospel. We destroy that hold of the devil, that strong man over the lives of these ones in the name of Jesus. And we decree, O oh Lord, that your word will have, O oh Lord, express way into their hearts and in their minds in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you thanks for this, O oh Lord. Accept our thanks. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Father, for answer to this prayer, O so Lord. For it is in Jesus Christ, holy and mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a blessing. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being a part of this service right now. Thank God for uh, this ministration. Uh, I, first of all, I want to you know, reach out to those of you who uh, received you know, Jesus Christ as Savior Lord in the course of this service. I want you to know that that's the greatest you know, thing you can ever do. And uh, you have you know, uh, repented of your sins. And you have received you know jesus christ our savior lord and i want to again congratulate you now there are four things because of time four things that you know we would recommend and would advise you to start to do may i even say command you to start to do all right yeah number one you need to start to attend a bible believing teaching and preaching church it must be a church that honors god that focuses on the word of god and the scriptures and the bible okay now not the jehovah's witness by the way okay yeah all right to say that uh, no apology uh they reference the holy spirit not as an it or as a force and that's why i say no not jehovah's token because that is what they do they say the holy spirit is, a, is an it and is a force the holy spirit is a person jesus no said it you no know, so much in john chapter 15 john chapter 16 so clearly you know that he you know he will teach you he will show you all things. that is why they're attacking so please it must be a church that glorifies jesus reverences the holy spirit as the one in charge right now and they also emphasize on the baptism with, of, uh, with the holy spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues this uh, jesus said in the book of mark chapter 16 he said to know this signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils they shall you know speak in new tongues they shall lay hand upon the sick and they shall come back this is where you should be going to please okay all right yeah please so uh I don't go to the ones the churches that are you know debating whether you know gay or lesbian should no forget about it. those are not that's that is not the church at all please all right yeah uh, go to the ones that are living church 
have where you know you can see the power of God moving in those places that way you, you should go praise God hallelujah number two um, you should also please learn they want to start to read the Bible spend time in the Word of God you know uh, you this is how you um, you grow right feed on the word read the Bible study it and please also make sure that you log into this platform every Wednesday and every Friday where you have been taught the Word of God so that you will grow Every one of us who went to school, well, all of us, most of us, if not yeah, as much as I can say, and then they were taught by teachers. So here is you no know, uh, uh, my calling as an evangelist is also to equip you. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter four, it says you no know, that you no know, he gave gifts you no know, to men. So I'm one of the gifts of God to the body of Christ and to you as well. You know, for the equipping of the saints and for the work of the ministry. So we are equipping you and being equipped yourself to equip you as well to do the work. So the Word of God is pivotal and central. I don't do anything, we don't do anything as a ministry aside from what the Word of God says. Praise God, hallelujah. So that's number two. Number three, start to have, you must have an active prayer life. Spend time in prayer every day. You need it, please. You need it, please spend time in prayer. I can't emphasize that enough. Jesus was the man of prayer. And so um, that is how you get close. Have a close fellowship with your Heavenly Father, with our Heavenly Father, both with the Word and the prayer. So please know that's number three. And number four, start to tell people about Jesus. Okay, start to tell people about Jesus. What He has, what he has done in your life um, is beyond what money can buy. So tell people about Jesus and that is how others will come to know Jesus Christ through you in the name of Jesus. So that is all we have you know, for you today. And also please do continue to join us in praying for uh, the salvation of the lost. The Bible says in Luke, uh, uh, Luke 19 verse 10, Jesus said, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. So um, um, so there's so many, so many, so many that are still lost. And, um, you know, so please pray for us. Pray for us you know, that you know, we need more laborers. We need you. Uh, we need you. Okay. Uh, God did not say for God so loved the world that he gave the world, you know, uh, uh, 300 trillion uh, pounds. No, he gave. So you are needed. Jesus, God needs you. Jesus needs you. Come, please, and serve, you know, uh, in reaching the lost. And all you have to do is just, you know, there's no tracks we can send to you and go out there and tell somebody Jesus loves you. You can even put it in their in their in their homes as well. These are the things. Be um, part of advancing God's kingdom and bringing the good news about Jesus Christ to somebody to somebody who was lost. I was once lost, and I thank God that He found me. Praise God, you know. And uh, you too, for those of you who are born again Christians, you were once lost. So why hide and keep away from others? You know that you who you once were from getting the same message to be saved so please you know i'm not having to go at anyone too at, at anyone but please let's let's reach out to the lord so so important that's what we're about and we keep doing that in jesus mighty name listen thank you so much for your time i know we've gone way above over time but we don't waste time here we always spend quality time in god's presence don't forget we'll meet again on wednesday at the same time of you know, 7 p.m gmt so please don't miss it for anything at all not for football or whatever it is in jesus mighty name so i hope to see you again have a wonderful and a fruitful weekend uh, make sure you're in church on sunday nothing should stop you please endeavor to be there and have a glorious week ahead in jesus mighty name the lord bless you the lord keep you the lord cause his face to shine upon you the lord be gracious to you lift his kindness upon you give you peace and peace and peace on all sides i place the name of the lord jesus christ upon you and your family uh, you are blessed in jesus mighty name amen have a wonderful weekend god bless you see you again soon in jesus name amen Gospel Ministries every Wednesdays for Bible study and Fridays for revival service on Facebook, Instagram or YouTube via the links showing on the screen. 
follow us on all our social media pages for daily inspiration from the Word of God.